The Friday Forum Conversation Cafe is, is a weekly program here, and it is one of my favorite things that I get to do every week. Um, thank you for joining us. I have a few announcements um, from the line itself before I have to my colleague Michelle, who will first be that, who will be our sponsors. The first is um, you are probably aware, but just to be sure you know, today's talk is a part of the series. Um, the series cards should be in front of you, or you will find them around. Various places. Um, for the next two weeks, we will have Sam Smith here um, on the topic of juvenile justice in Champaign County. Sam Patrick will be two different panels of people to come here. So Sam himself will be talking to us for two weeks straight. We're going to have some groups of people, although we wish you would, Sam. Um, but we'll have groups of people here um, really talking um, in depth about the topic of juvenile justice here in Champaign County. Also, while you're here, I would invite you to walk to the room next door behind me, where we have an exhibition um, by Kofi Gassister. Yes, there is a connection here, um, but it's a beautiful mega exhibition on it. It is up at the end of this month. So I would invite you to see Kofi's work while you're here. And then also on the first floor of the line, tis this evening, we're looking for ways to help my friends and neighbors who um, are in need of various things. So there is a winter coat drive past Smitten's Love of Stars Coats, um, but for recent and in income in immigrants, particularly in this time. And then there's also a food drive with the candy drive at the store. So draw your attention to both of those things. If you come to speak, you may want to bring some stuff along. So here's Michelle. Thank you. Hi, everyone. And thank you. That's so much. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, my name is Michelle Macy. I'm the Assistant Director with Diversity and Social Justice Education. Uh, and there's a number of sponsors on and off campus who helped make this series possible. Uh, so we just want to extend a huge thank you to them. And I'm going to read through a list uh, real quick for you. So we've got Center for Advanced Study, Human Humanities Research Institute, Women and Gender and Global Perspectives Program, College of ACES, College of Fine and Applied Arts, the First Mennonite Church of Champaign-Urbana, McKinley Foundation, the Social Action Council of the Unitarian Universalist Church of Urbana-Champaign, Urbana-Champaign Friends Meeting, uh, the Student Cultural Programming through the University, Center for Global Studies at the U.S. Department of Education Title VI Grant, uh, Center for Innovation in Teaching and Learning, Department of African American Studies, Office of the Provost, School of Social Work, College of Education, and then Urbana Public Television, as well as WEFT Radio for helping us um, post these online and on the radio after the fact. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to highlight, there is a half sheet of paper uh, at your chair or on your table with some questions. It's just an evaluation that helps us continue to improve this program. Uh, there's also a QR code on the sheet. Uh, so if you prefer to do it on your phone, you can also do it that way, but we really appreciate the feedback that we get from you all. Um, the other thing is we have a bunch of these t-shirts. So if you do not already, make sure to see it out there during or after the program uh, so that you can, we're picking five people each week to get free t-shirts. Uh, we'd love to give you one. So make sure you sign in. Uh, and then I'm going to invite Dan back up to introduce our speaker for today. Thanks, Michelle. Um, so our speaker today is Jacqueline Kelly, um, and we're really grateful to Jacqueline for taking time out of your schedule. I know you have a new program and you are going to be supporting some events through the summer to run and then become the apartments and so we're grateful for taking time out of your here in July to tell us about your program. Um, I was late, I am this person, but I saw a great article in the paper about you as I think. Yeah, to get this one in here for a while. So thank you for saying yes. I'm going to ask you to do that. Um, we have a, a short slide here, and I'll just read it. Um, Jacqueline Kellapenny is the neighborhood ambassador supervisor for the city of Champaign. Um, Jacqueline was born in Malawi, Africa, but raised here in America with her five siblings. The value of helping your fellow person came from the old African teachings that were instilled by her parents. Jacqueline graduated from the University of Illinois, Urbana. 
where she learned the power of using her voice. She is passionate about teaching people the power of only one human, the importance of community, and that even as one person, you can stand up for our country. Jackie is one of the warmest examples um, that I think many people can do extraordinary things in order to be able to reach farther than what they can reach. Jacqueline has extensive experience in education, international relations, social services, and also volunteering. In addition, I just learned Jacqueline is a 2022 recipient of a 40 under 40 award. So, congratulations, that's a really big deal. The topic of her talk today is the personal impact of social justice with helping well with Jacqueline. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, as stated, um, my name is Jacqueline Calapenny. Um, it sounds so much cooler when somebody else is announcing you. So thank you guys so much for giving me the opportunity. Um, I am the Neighborhood Ambassador Supervisor for the City of Champaign. It is a new program that I am spearheading under the direction of Carrie Wyman and the management of John Ruffin. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the program that I'm helping currently put together um, for the city of Champaign, but overall, I really want to talk about how social justice does impact our communities and how you as an individual can also assist and help in that manner. All right, so just a little bit of a story about how our program started. So our program is actually being funded by ARPA. Um, one of the good things is that we are addressing two key city council goals. Um, these goals are keeping our community safe and our city invests to support its vibrant, diverse neighborhoods. I'm originally from Southeast Africa. I'm Malawian. I also identify as black and a woman. I identify as a sister. I'm a lot of different things. And one of those things that you realize is that a lot of people in our, in our communities also identify as different individuals. And those individuals, if we work together, we can really make something amazing happen. The purpose of my program is really to also help deter crime. So if you see something, you say something, but sometimes those things are hard when you're doing it by yourself. So my team is there in a lot of different spaces, whether it's downtown or in neighborhoods or talking to leaders, um, whether it's in the community or at the university, um, in different residential areas, we are available and around for all of those things. Our goal is to also help reduce calls for services to first responders. So sometimes you'll see that you'll get a 19 calls for the fire department, but it's actually something that's more of a mental health crisis and they need resources. My team is available for our first responders to hear the issues and calls that they're receiving that maybe just need additional resources that those residents don't know about. No, just kidding. No, won't change my slide. Just kidding. We're still having, we're still having errors. Got it. There we go. All right. So here you can see that there is a response to public safety um, and gun violence concerns. Um, the city has put together um, the gun violence blueprint through the equity and engagement department. We are working hand in hand with them. I'm actually part of the neighborhood services department. You will see neighborhood programs, code compliance, neighborhood relations, and the neighborhood ambassadors that's under the neighborhood relations program. We are working hand in hand with equity and engagement department as well as other enforcement areas like the police, fire, health and safety responses. We work with cameras that are around in the entire city to assist and give resources to the residents that mostly need them. One of the things that we have learned in this research is that the city of Champaign is high in resources, but we're also high in poverty. So how can we blend those two things together? How can we get the right resources to the right people in the right areas? So our program overviews, um, we are a highly <laughs> visible city brand. So you'll see my team in orange in the downtown area. You'll see them in orange in resident, residential neighborhoods. You'll 
maybe might sort of kind of see them in orange at U of I, but you know, everybody is in orange here. So you might miss them or skip through them. But, you know, when I went to U of I, I realized that sometimes, even though I was a townie, I hardly ever went to the town. The goal here with the Neighborhood Ambassador Program is for us to be able to bridge that gap between the university, the community, and the city of Champaign. What we want to do is we want you guys to know that you belong with us too, and we belong with you. And we are together in all of this, you know, organizing and fighting for social justice and getting the people the things that they need. We're in this together. So if you find yourself in the downtown area and you find yourself lost, if you see somebody who's in orange, you can ask for help. If you find yourself graduated and you find yourself having a family here and you need resources, you can call somebody in orange and they'll be able to assist you in the resources that you need. We don't expect people to know everything about everything. That's the purpose of having a village. At the city of Champaign, we're trying to create that village that you feel safe and comfortable to actually talk to us and be able to talk to you again. We want to rebuild that gap that we have seen is a little broken after the global pandemic that we saw and we saw that people were inside and people weren't talking to anybody anymore. I want you to be able to look at your neighbor and say, will you be my neighbor? I want you to look at your neighbor and say, here's my Instagram handle. Don't you wanna be my friend? And when we start with something as small and as little as that, we're able to have conversations. We're able to communicate in different areas in different ways that we weren't able to communicate before. You gotta love technology. <laughs> so the pro program operations, um, as you can see here, there are five neighborhood ambassadors. It's me, I am the neighborhood ambassador supervisor, and then I have four people underneath me. We work together. The motto that I have for my team is one band, one sound. I don't know if anybody has ever watched Drumline, but really that's our goal. Our goal is to be able to be one unit together all the time. We want to be with you and we want to be a part of you. We want to build relationships with you. We no longer wanna just be the city organization. We want to be part of the conversations outside of the eight to five hours. There is a neighborhood relations manager and an admin assistant, and then my team. And that's how we really run um, the neighborhood ambassador program. Similar to you know, how my dad ran the family. It was my dad, and that was it. You know, <laughs> But we don't want to do that anymore. We want everybody to be able to feel like they are a part of the conversation and that their voice matters. And so what we're doing is we're going out into the community and you're gonna be able to see us and we will see you and we'll be able to have that conversation together. Our program is an all year round program. Over the summertime, this is the hours that we had. It was Tuesdays through Saturdays. Tuesdays and Wednesdays, we worked one until 10 p.m. And if you know anything about city government, it's usually done at 5 p.m. We are open and we are available and we're ready after five. So if you see somebody, say something. We'll be able to talk to you. We'll be able to have that conversation. We'll be able to go to your events. We're here to support you. We wanna be your cheerleader. We wanna cheer on everything you're doing, dreaming about, thinking about, and even worried about. We wanna have those conversations and we wanna have them openly in a safe environment. Thursday through Saturday, you'll see my team is available from three until midnight. So that is gonna actually end as of November 1st because we're into our winter hours and our winter schedule has changed. So my team will be working Monday through Friday, one until 10 p.m., but still keeping those evening hours because we really want to be available for people after five. I know what it was like being a student where you know, you're going to school all day. Some of us are working and just don't have time to call the city building before 5 p.m. If you are going through something, how do you reach out to the city? Who do you talk to? And if you send an email, does it die at the email? Sometimes you really wanna to talk to a real live living human. And so that's what we're here for. We're here to really assist after the 5 p.m. era. So the goal of the city organization's neighborhood ambassador program was to have a real robust engagement plan for the summer and fall. 
the original idea was we were gonna have nine engagement opportunities. Overall, my team did 45 different events from May 26th until present day, 45. And that was for residents, for the city organization, for our community partners and everything in between. We went to the Pride Parade. We met some visitors right here on the left-hand side in the Rolling Stones shirt. They were visitors coming into Champaign. They were actually a band. They were performing at the Axe Bar and they didn't know where to park. And we saw them parked in the wrong place. And we were like, hey, by the way, you might want to move your car because if you park there, you're going to get towed. How would you feel if you came to Champaign and you were just visiting and you were traveling and you were trying to have a great time and you went back to your car and it wasn't there? Man, that would really hurt your feelings about coming back here, right? The goal that my team has is that we want to be sure that you understand the rules and regulations and enforcement that are happening in the city, but we also want you to know how you can fit within those limits. You can still park downtown, just maybe not in this area. You can still have a good time, but you know, be careful when you do this. You can go out, but maybe you shouldn't drink out on the you know, um, sidewalk. There are rules and regulations that all of us have to follow, and we just really wanna make sure that you know and you understand what those rules and regulations are. We're here to have an amazing time with you. We've worked with the United Way and community coalitions, and we were able to help put together the Victory Over Violence event that was at the Hedge Pop Park. That was about $300,000 that was raised to help other community organizations get resources that they need to help our local residents here in the, in the city. We are working together to make sure that we are together in all of this. Now, one of my favorite things about what we do is that we do a little bit of everything. We are building parks, we are helping you downtown, and we are helping you throw your trash away. So one of the things that we have been able to do is we have been able to increase the small grant funding applications that the city has had in the last years. And in the you know, six months that my team has been here, we increased the activities for small grant applications by 61%, 61%, which allowed other people to be able to get those small grants, get the things that they needed in their neighborhoods and be able to get the funding that they needed to do things like a cleanup. A cleanup event allows people to get a few dumpsters and tell their neighbors, hey, you have that old couch that you've been wanting to throw away for the last three years? Well, here you go. Here's an opportunity to be able to do that. We have been able to help students figure out different opportunities to be able to get the reading assessments that they needed. We want adults and children to get those same assessments as well. We have also increased the activity that neighborhoods are actually doing. So there's a 50% increase in neighborhoods cleaning up their own neighborhoods. We really want to keep Champagne beautiful. And I know when I walk around, it's just a pride that I feel that I see that people are keeping the city beautiful. And so we were able to increase that um, capacity. Being able to be a part of a village is so important to me. And I think it's so important to be able to be a part of a village regardless of who you are. Now, as an international student originally, coming from Southeast Africa, it was so hard to understand what exactly I needed to do here in America. It's hard also being an international student because there's so many family that you have left back in your home country. How do you balance both worlds, right? And that is a part of the conversation as it relates to social justice. There's a lot of us that are here in this community, in this school, at this university that are trying to balance both worlds. We're trying to figure out how to be an American, how to be an African, how to be black, and how to be a woman. And there's so many other things in between all of those issues. How can I help my community? For me, it's through this program. Being able to spearhead a program that has never been done for the city organization, to be able to talk to people who look like me, that feel like me, that have had incidences like me, that have had issues like me. 
I'll tell you that it's not a linear way to getting to a program like this. I did not get to the city of Champaign in a straight line. In 2020, my entire life fell apart. In January of 2020, a really good friend of mine passed away due to complications of diabetes. In February of the same year, my best friend was murdered right down the street on Anthony Drive. In March, COVID happened. In April, my father died. In May and June, I was stuck in Africa for two months because of a global pandemic. In June, I lost my job. How do you continue when everything feels broken? It's through community. And that community is how you continue to go. What I've been able to do with the Neighborhood Ambassador Program is to remind my fellow neighbors, to remind the people that are sitting right next to me, are you okay? Because sometimes it's just as simple as asking somebody if they're okay, if we're gonna get to the next step. It's not easy doing what we do, but it is possible. I'm gonna take this moment so that we can have a conversation and we can be friends. I wanna be besties. All right, thank you. So at this moment, I will be able to take questions. <laughs> yeah. So you talked a little bit about the helping helping speakers not to be applied. And we're seeing some um, changes in sort of talking to everybody down. Um, could you talk a little bit about what has been happening downtown over the past uh, year or so, and, and how the city is responding to that. Maybe even a little bit about um, the city's sort of principles in responding to that. Um, yes, so the question is, um, what has been going on downtown as it relates to parking, and how has the city been responding to those things? So there's been a lot going on downtown. Um, as we saw in a lot of cities um, throughout the United States, um, there was an increase in um, violence um, in so many different areas. Um, and so what we've been trying to do is to create safe spaces and places for people. We want you to feel safe downtown. We want you to feel comfortable downtown, whether you're you know, new to the city, whether you're old to the city, whether you've lived here your whole entire lives or you've lived here for one day. Things change throughout that. And so to be able to assist in what's been going on, we have changed a little bit of the parking situations. The reason why is because there have been parties that happen on the street. And if you are a small business owner that has not had a lot of traffic for two years, we want the party, to go inside the business. And so to be able to, you know, meet everybody in the middle, we stop parking at 10 p.m. on Thursday, Fridays, and Saturdays on Walnut Street, but there is actual parking downtown. So you can go to the Hill Street parking lots. Um, you can find other parking garages um, in the downtown area for you to be able to still have a safe and fun night. There are a lot of different opportunities. And so, we are working together in this situation. Um, my team is going to be going out into neighborhoods, into residents now that we have a little bit of a slower time frame because we're not doing engagement activities every you know, day. We're able to have more conversations. So what the city's response was is we really want to just create safe spaces and places. We have put the neighborhood ambassadors in the downtown area. And so what we do is we actually go to every single bar and restaurant in the downtown area on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday nights at about nine o'clock till 10 p.m. to remind people that parking is ending at 10. The goal is to not get people's cars towed. So we are looking and we are talking and we are making sure we are having those, you know, engagement opportunities with people. You're welcome.
Yeah. So my question is, uh, could you speak a little bit more specifically about how you detect and what sorts of packages you have with law enforcement? Yes, so the question is, how do we deter crime and what is the relationship with law enforcement? So, you know, the best way to deter crime is to just be present um, and also by building relationships. So our team is going inside of neighborhoods a lot. So my goal is, if I know your son, I hope I, he's not doing anything bad downtown. If he is, I could say, you know, I know your mom. I'm telling, you know, the goal is to not have to call police, right? Um, the way to deter crime is to have those relationships. It is harder for people to commit crimes in front of people that they know and they respect than it is to just do it to anybody. And I come from old school, you know, you do something bad and yeah, I'm actually gonna whoop you, right? <laughs> um, I'm not gonna be putting my hands on anybody's child, obviously, right? But it's that old school mentality that as a village together, we can do it, right? If I build these relationships with people, they're gonna know me, their children are gonna know me, their children's children will know me. And they will trust the fact that when they come downtown, if they see a crime, if they're not comfortable telling the police, maybe they'll tell me. That's the goal, right? Because not everybody is comfortable in front of the police. And that could be because of their own specific trauma. They could be coming from an international location where the police are not safe. They could be coming from an incident where they've never felt safe in their own house. And so there's a lot of different reasons why people might not talk to law enforcement. I am not law enforcement. I am just your friendly neighbor, your girl next door that wants you to be safe and have a good time. And the best way to do that is by building those relationships. So to answer your question, the way that we deter crime is by building those relationships with people, getting to know them and having them understand that I am a safe space and they can trust me with the issues that they have. Are the ambassadors mandated reporters? That's a very good question. So technically the ambassadors are not mandated reporters, um, but our goal is that if we see something, we do say something. So um, if we see something is happening, we are going to reach out to the right resources. So if it means that there's a mental crisis and we're looking at mental health resources for them. If it is a you know enforcement situation where the police do need to be involved then we are reaching out to the police. If we see smoke, we're gonna probably call the fire department. Um, so we're not mandated reporters like a teacher or a social worker, but we do believe that if we see something, we are going to say something. That's also the reasons why we're trying to build those relationships because we want people to also feel like if they don't, feel like they can say something, they can say something to me and I'll say something. Um, so, yeah. Nobody on this side has questions, okay. <laughs> All right, we'll go there and then there, okay. to an outsider person? That is a really good question. Um, so the question is, how am I able to build those relationships when people do have a build relationships with people in Champaign? Um, 